Hey everyone, we're the Hobby Farm Guys. I'm Brian. And I'm Eric. And unfortunately, Steve decided to go to Hawaii instead of spending time with us, so we're missing him today. But we replaced him with something better. We got our friend Dan here with us. And a couple weeks ago, we spent some time with Dan working his cattle. Well, he was working and we were watching. <laughs> We'll take a look at what happened. Tell us, when did you develop your interest in raising cattle? Actually, uh, cattle of my own from 2006. So I was raised, uh, my dad and my mom ranched for years, and both grandparents on both sides ranched for years. Uh, however, in my upbringing, I swore I would never own a cow, I'd never own a horse, just simply because of the physical labor it demands. It's a de demanding job. So. But 2006, when I was able to buy the range rights from my dad, and that's when uh, Lisa and I started. Doing so, how many cows do you have now? So currently, there's 56 pairs. So that means there's a cow in a moment. So that's 112, and then we have 200 bulls, and then we have five or six uh, heifers that are not here, but they're uh, part of our. So how is the business side of raising cattle these days? So for the, this year is gonna, uh, the jury's still out on this year, uh, dealing with the drought situation we're in. Uh, we really don't know uh, how the summer's gonna be up on the range as far as rainfall and feed form. We're optimistic with the wet spring we've had. Um, but the hay situation, so the wintertime feed form is looking pretty bad at this point. So it's kind of up in the air whether we're going to be able to stay in business or not. We spent a few hours with you here a couple weeks ago, and one of the things we watched was you vaccinating some of the calves. What exactly were you vaccinating them for? So uh, the, the vaccine itself, one of them is called Eight Way. And that's to ward off a disease that's called black wave. And if they get that, that's an actual muscle deterioration disease. And then the other was a respiratory vaccine. So to keep them clear of pneumonia and respiratory issues. We also saw you were branding cattle. What's the purpose of the branding? So the sole purpose of brand is, is to prove ownership. So at this point, these calves uh, are starting to scab over. And that's when a brand is actually legal. We started to be in the scab over stage, so we can consider them actually legally ours now. So one of the things Eric helped you out with when he was up here was branding your calves. How do you do? You know, for uh, minimal instruction, I was pretty proud of Eric. He, he kind of cowboyed up and got right in there, and he had a few questions that he asked while he was right before and during, but. All in all, we worked out really well. I could have swore you told me I ruined your favorite calf, so. <laughs> I said don't ruin my favorite oh. <laughs> We also saw you castrating calves. Uh, some of them surgically, and some of them by banding. Uh, what is your preference, and why the two different methods? So, my preference is to actually band them, so that should occur when they're a day or two old. Uh, we go out and tag them with their mom's tags, uh, so we make sure they're paired up. Then we'll actually give them them two shots initially, the eight way and the respiratory. Uh, and then I'll put a band on if they are a bull calf. The two or three that we had to cut, uh, one I'd bought, so I didn't obviously have a chance to band him, but the other two came down to a time issue and, and mom had had enough at that point and didn't want us messing with them babies anymore. So we kind of got run out of there. So. All right, so we saw a lot of people working out there. What is the hardest part of the process we were watching? I think uh, probably the hardest physically would be that little guy loading them calves. I mean, that little guy, he had his hands on some of them calves that were pretty big. And he had some help back there, but he seemed to be doing uh, most of the physical work himself. 
Um, uh, my boy Blaze had a pretty tough job. He was the guy putting rope on the feet and holding them feet, and he did get kicked pretty solid one time. So, yeah. Uh, mo most all of it's kind of, you know, you, you just got to be very careful because it's working with live livestock and unpredictable. Uh, nobody ever seems to want a vaccinated brand, so that always kind of ends up being my job. So at one point, uh, we saw one of the mother cows seemed upset that her calf was in the chute. Were you concerned about that? I was in the sense that that's a new cow to our herd. So uh, we probably she's probably been on the place for 30 days. And actually, that's the first time I've ever had one approach and get that close to us. And Maddie, if you remember, she was right up front there in front. And I did haul her hay more to have Maddie look up and see that she was actually coming. And I did keep my eye on her. And it turned out for the best. She was just very curious about what was going on with the baby. But yeah, I was, I was concerned. Yeah. So in your impression, with all your experience as a cowboy, is Eric ready to be a cowboy? <laughs> well, I, I'd say maybe not an Idaho cowboy, but a Montana sheep herder. <laughs> I think he'd fit right in there. And a couple of years of apprenticeship there, then, yeah, I'm sure I'll take a look at Eric, maybe pretty long full time. We're about three minutes into this, I've already stepped in about 15 fresh cow pies. Yep. Bummer. So Dan, do you watch much YouTube, and if so, what's your favorite channel? So I do watch YouTube, but I'm pretty exclusive to the Hobby Farm guys. Uh, it's the only one I'm actually subscribed to, and it is a good channel. All right. Everybody should subscribe, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>